This is the beauty of face to face. I can see your faces. Although the technology now allows us to see each other. But here, I can feel you. I can touch you, which we cannot do online. However, given that this is the technology available to us, whether we like it or not, it's here. So we might as well learn how to use it, considering that our students are really into it. Um, I would like you to think of uh, what do you think is the relationship between assessment and excellence? Do you see some kind of connection? Is one influencing the other? But anyway, whatever are your concept of assessment, maybe you can look at the slide here. Look at your own concept. What is the closest concept to you when you talk about assessment? Look at your own practices. The practices that you have been doing, which of these are closest to what you do in the classroom? What I want to do now, uh, I would like to present to you first the general objectives. I, th I suppose you were sent the proposal or the invitation and with the invitation is a description of the course, including the general objectives. And so I, I pick only two because these are the two uh, objectives or uh, general objectives that are support in support of the topic assigned to me. So which means we are looking into the uniqueness of the online environment plus to look into assessment methods used online. And specifically for my session, this is what I want to achieve. To help you go through this assessment process, both collaborative and self, but I would like to connect it in the design of instruction. Uh, Coming from my field where I work with technology, instruction, and curriculum, um, I cannot do assessment. I cannot recommend assessment, not unless there is a clear idea of the instruction. So there is the connection between instruction and assessment. Okay, to start with, and since this is a topic on collaboration, I might, you might as well go through the exercise of collaborating. I will be asking you to go into a group and um, my assistant here, okay? My assistant here, no less than the vice chancellor, she will be distributing to you colored papers. One color. Distribute the rest to the others. You call if you don't have a color. Yeah, are there extra? She didn't. She doesn't have a color. Are yon? Okay. Sino pang wala? There. Can you give them other colors? More? Are there other? Sino pang wala? Two more. Can we add for two more? Father, si father, lagyan mo rin. Oh, sige. Do you have all, all of you have a color? Yes or no? You're so shy, guys. Do you have your colors? Yes. Look at your color. Can you distinguish it? Yes. Now, I would like you to stand, bring everything with you, and join people with the same color. That will force you now to know each other. One... One important element of collaboration is you should feel comfortable with its other. Okay. The green stay here. Where are the green? Father, anong color mo? The yellow stay here. Kasi nakakonek ka na. The yellow stay here. 
The blue, the blue, stay there. The blue, the red, stay here. The orange, ah, merong orange, no? Red, okay, red, yellow, yellow, green, blue. Anybody who doesn't have a group? Okay. Can you just spend a little time first, introduce yourself? When you leave this place, you should have new friends. Or, if there are people whom you have worked with, you should know them better. <laughs> Sandali, ha? I think he wants... Can we push this? Yan. Sige. Uh, would you like to push this so she can be at the head? Can we push this a bit? Can we... I, can you push this forward? Sige, sige. Then you can sit. No, no, no. Ito. She needs to sit. Okay. I will be... We will be starting soon. So, wrap up whatever you're doing. I will be asking one of you... I, I will choose one of you to introduce your group. So you are now known as the yellow, the red, the green, and the blue group. I will be asking this group first because they finish first. Would you like to introduce your group? I would like to... Um, good, af uh, good morning to everyone. We are the yellow team. I'd like to introduce my members. I have the pleasure to introduce to you Lisa from the University of Batangas, Raybel from also from the University of Batangas, Rina from UP Rural High School, and of course our uh, muse, <laughs> Father June from Don Bosco, Canlubang, and I myself, I'm from UP Los Baños, Rose. Okay, so there are two UP uh, LB Rural, Two from Batangas and Father from Don Bosco. Uh, the Blue Group. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. So our group are the Blue Groups. Uh, we have Miss Mai, May, Mark, Apple, and Judith. Okay. And a uh, little bit more. I'm the only single person in this table. And uh, two of... The, Two of our ladies are pregnant right now. Five months, seven months. Okay. And both of, uh, the two of them are from, U from the University of Batangas and University of the Philippines. And I'm from Don Bosco. Okay. Oh, si Father pala may kasama. Oh, may I ask you now to please introduce your, the red team? Good morning, everyone. We are the red team. <laughs> and um, my group mates are Ma'am Abby from CEU and I, I'm sorry from university <laughs> I'm sorry sorry po let's take two <laughs> Ma'am Abby from University of Batangas Sir Jericho from University of Batangas as well and Sir Noel and from CEU and Ma'am Tess from CEU also and I'm Ian from Rural High School so there are three schools represented and you want to? You were you were assigned. You were assigned by force. Okay. Okay. So you you lost or you speak for them. So good morning, everyone. So I may I introduce my group, Green Group. Uh, the first one, myself. Uh, uh, my name is Sean. You can call me Sean. Very easy word. Sean. I am the lecturer in Thailand. S C O U. Yeah. And the answer, may I introduce Lisa? Yeah, Lisa is um, someone who works in UPOU now, I think. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah, at the same time. Mm. The next one, the Y from Los Batanka. 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 Uh, Romeo. Romeo. The same, the same university, the same school. And the last one, Rorio. It is sweet. She said, actually, I call her Rorita, and she said, Rorio may be more sweet. Yeah. So her name is Rorio now. 
Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let's proceed now. Maybe you can turn your seats facing the set. Uh, um, now you will start working. I have some uh, pencil pens, which again, my uh, most respectable <laughs> assistant will be distributing. The question here is that talk among yourselves and identify the types of assessment commonly used in your courses. Whatever course you're, you're uh, handling, talk among yourselves. And then start identifying the most frequently used, which you now rank according to the most used to the least used. But please talk among yourselves first. Because there are, I'm sure there are more than five. And there are only five meta cards with you, right? So choose the most common. We will be adding some more papers. Maybe we can uh, have three additional so that you can come out with eight different types. Okay, discuss now with your members and then assign someone who will do the writing. I will be asking you by group to, uh, to, read, to read your first top three, no? your top three. And take note of what the others are uh, sharing. So find out if there is duplication, similarity, Ready with your top three? The other, the, the other team, uh, please listen carefully if there, are, uh, if there are similarities so you can take note of what is similar to what you're doing. Okay, let's listen to the green team. They were the one who finished first. The green team. Please listen so you can, so you can uh, get a feel on what's common and what's not common. Oh, ready na? Hindi pa ready itong red team eh. Sorry ah, we are asynchronous. And so there is time pressure. If we are only, oh, we are synchronous. If we are asynchronous, then maybe I can give you the whole day. But since we are real time, we have to be under time pressure. Get ready. May we ask you now to listen, please? The blue team, turn around now. This time you look at me. I'm a jealous resource person. When you don't look at me, I feel hurt. <laughs> Biro. Oh, sige. Let's start with the green team. They will read the first three. Uh, of the uh, different types of assessment, here are the top three picks of our group for the day. It would be pen and paper test along with essay and objective type of assessment. We also have assignments, sit works, and board works, the second. The third would be recitation and journal writing, and which includes also reflections. Okay, thank you. Take note, pencil, paper, assignment, reaction, recitation, and journal writing. May we listen now from the yellow team? Our top three assessment forms are recitation for the first one, quizzes for the second, and seat works for the third one. Thank you. How about the red team? Uh, for the red team, our top three written exam for the first, second is practical exam, and third is competency-based assessment. Okay. Thank you. May we listen to... Are you the one assigned? Ikaw nagsalita kanina. Okay. For our group, the blue team, uh, the first one is the summative assessment. For the second one is the projects, and the third one are the return demonstration. Akulet, no? Summative, project, return demonstration. You notice there's a wide variety. If I will ask you to read your eight, I'm sure you have more. 
But put those, put those, keep them there because towards the end of the session, we will be going back to those lists that you have. I would like to go back first, uh, a sort of a review. What is assessment? What's the purpose of assessment? Why do you do assessment? There is enough literature now describing that assessment is you assess for learning, you assess as learning, and assessment of learning. How is one different from the other? If you look at the assessment for learning, really there is the, the use of these assessment tools for the purpose of making some adjustment as to whether the students are learning. So when the students, when you find that the students are learning, you proceed. But if you feel that the students are not learning, then you go back. That's why we call it formative. Meaning they're not done, they are in the process of learning, and so you make some adjustment. And ideally, formative evaluation or assessment are not recorded. They are graded, they are marked, but they are not recorded towards a grade. Simply because, as the word formative, it states that you are in the process of formation. You're not done. When we talk of assessment as learning, here you are looking into stu your students who are being transformed into independent learners, who become more responsible learners, and then they get the feedback. Whatever feedback you get, they get from you, that, be that now becomes their basis for their self-improvement. So they make decision as to where they can improve their work. And therefore, in this particular type, you notice that the focus is on learning. And then the, the center actor in this particular type are the students. Here, maybe the, um, the, the actor is still the teacher. The teacher is the one who decides what to change, what to keep, what to add, what to subtract. Uh, so it's still teacher-centered, while the second one is now putting the student at the center. And third, and the third, guess what is the third? The third, this is the most common. This is what we usually do in the classroom, where we ask our student to go through series of tests, pencil paper, essay test, final exam, uh, midterm. Where are we now? We are in the midterm? Prelims. Okay? They are... They are they are uh, earning some points, and these are now recorded towards a grade. So this is what you call now the summative. Okay? So what does this have to do with online learning? Where do we focus online learning? Take note, we are in a different environment. Unlike in a face-to-face, -face, the, the teacher can immediately do some remedy. The teacher can do some remediation. The teacher can do some enrichment when needed. But in this case, you don't see them. You don't have a feel. They don't show you their frustration. You don't see their faces. You don't hear their intonation of com complaint. No body language. So how do you make, get a feel of what the students are going through? So... Given that there is a different uh, environment, online learning environment is very different in the sense that there is something between us. Right now, you are with me. I speak, you listen. And then when you process the information, you speak, I listen. Very natural way of communicating, isn't it? We were born... And we learn how to do those things since birth. So you learn to speak. But in online, there is now a mediation, something between us. Since we are not physically present, no? we are separated in time and space. Then there is a technology that was put be between us 
so that the communication will continue. Well, when we started, if you go back to history of distance education, we started with paper, no? printed material, sent, sent to your student, and then after some time, they will write you back, which are maybe your assignment, you check them and send them back. How long will that take? And how many of the students will receive your feedback Okay. One student, one feedback. Not unless you have the photocopy at the time. Unfortunately, their answers deeper. And so one answer or one feedback cannot be uh, what, uh, one, one size for all. You really have to customize it because their concerns are different. Now, the beauty of now being online is that you can look at your work or requirements given to you or assignment given to you and you can work on it with a lot of time. That is what a synchronous no, environment will provide you. You're not required to answer right away. So, what we're doing now is like telephone. When I call you, you have to answer me right now. The asynchronous has something to do with like texting. I sent you a text message, you can choose not to answer me now. Right? You can choose to look at my question or my concern and maybe put it down until you have the time or you have the answer to send back a message. So which means the second example, which is what's happening in, in an open learning situation or even in this learning situation, you are given the time to reflect. You're given the time to plan. You're given the time to research. You are given the time to interview. And therefore, the quality of answer increase. Better. Unlike face-to-face, -face, if I ask one of you, you have to answer me right now. So the quality of answer is also what we call surface. Mababaw. That's, the, that's why the kind of answers we get sometimes from our students are so frustrating because we don't have time to wait. And also it's frustrating for the student because they are put on the spot and they must answer. Sometimes they will be forced to say, I don't know, which is so humiliating. Okay, given this, I would like to share with you some of my readings uh, about assessment. It says that assessment is the fundamental driver that makes our student learn. Do you agree? What do you think? Is it really assessment that will drive our student to learn? Or is it the content? Or is it the activity? Or is it their fear? Or is it the grade? So the question there is, we as teachers, are these the kind of learners we want to produce? Is there anybody who has similar idea with Lisa? Is there anybody who supports the stand of Lisa? Students are motivated because of the grade. Rose, what's your idea? I was just my yeah, so bitter. <laughs> but, uh, I think that's a very it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. um, it can uh, I couldn't help but reflect on um, how students are are learning from you know from children being children. Mm -hmm. I think a lot depends on the the school a lot depends on the philosophy of the of the school the teacher because like, i uh, i have a, a daughter but in her grade school mm -hmm. she was um, taught to be very independent mm -hmm. and they have um, a modular type of learning mm -hmm. and it wasn't so much like uh, studying for the exam it wasn't so much for that because i looked at their material and they, they were really the in in the material in 
<clears throat> integrated in the material was already self-assessment questions. Good. So okay. I don't think the self-assessment questions were graded. I mean, mm -hmm. not yes. if they were, not that high. Mm -hmm. So uh, the motivation for, for, for learning and finishing the modules and going through the, the material, I think that was an important mot motivation for that particular mm -hmm. school. So I think a lot depends on, on the philosophy. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I believe that it should be more than being grade conscious. Okay. So thank you for that sharing. And uh, this is not limited to the basic education. How many of our universities are counting the number of passers in the licensing exam? How many of their how, how many of their classes are are taught as if they are only aiming to pass the licensing exam? The question I raise here when I have students, you know, we discuss this. Are we are we producing students who will be good only in the classroom? Are we helping them learn something that's only good for the test? After the test, what? So many of students, you know, after the exam, they forget everything. When you ask them, oh, what did you learn? Um, tapos na exam. The exam is over. So they forget everything. So I guess there's a lot more than merely getting a grade or passing an exam. Okay. Um, Rudy. Uh, well, the problem lies there is because of our educational system in the Philippines. Like when we talk about medical graduates and if you're aiming for PASCO, their major basis is the number of passing in the board exam. And like in other countries, like in Malaysia, Singapore, they do not uh, no, highly depend on, in fact, they do not have licensing exam. Well, okay, these are things to think about. But to me personally, the focus is still on learning. Para bang incidental, because they learn, then they should pass. Diba? So, it's a byproduct that if a student really learn, if the teachers really did their job, and the students learn, then the passing should not be a problem. There is the new concept in education now. It used to be I do all the talking here, and then when time comes, I leave. You leave. The new concept is that that's not teaching. Yeah, I lectured the whole two hours, but the question is, did you learn? The question now, or the, the, the point they are raising now, those who have been very critical with too much uh, teacher talking, the teacher is the one learning. The ship now is, there should be learning. If I did my job, the consequence is learning. My job is to teach. So if I taught, you should have learned. If you didn't learn, I did not teach. So think about it. And in this quotation, look at how much they put to assessment. How much assessment is uh, um, considered in terms of how students learn? Actually, there's a number, there are a number of literature really pointing out that students tend to learn what is tested. If you look at a program or a course, you can, you can identify what's valuable in that course through the exam. So what kind of exam are you giving to students? Do you require them to do critical thinking? If you do, then that's what's important in that course. If you ask your student to merely memorize, and then for them to really just repeat what they memorize, you're saying that what's important to you is their gaining of facts. Okay? So, this is something for us to think about, educators. We influence a lot of our students on the way they will behave once they are mature adult learners. 
So, do we go beyond content? Okay. For this session, I am assigned to do just two types, the collaborative uh, collaboration assessment, and of course, the other one is on self-assessment, reflection. Um, do you see the connection between the two? Are these two separate types, or is one a contributing factor to the other? Have you done either of the two? How many have used collaboration in the class? Okay. How many have used self-assessment in the form of reflection paper, journal, diaries in the classroom? Okay. Good. So some of you have an experience, and therefore, this will not be very difficult for you. We go back. You are even now. Most of you have uh, six in the group. This time, you will be working with a partner, which I will call a learning partner. In the online, you may call this the peer. Peer, learning. Now, you have a partner. Lisa, go back to your group. Ah, it's not even. Two, four, six. Uh, here. Here, Lisa. Ito, lima sila. Get a partner. And I would like you to discuss the person next to you, the question I'm posting. Arrive at an agreement. Mag-agree kayo. You, you talk and then you agree. Now, after agreeing, I would like you to share your definition to the bigger group. But when you share, make sure you don't merely duplicate, but you build on the answers given by people ahead of you. You may add, expand, elaborate, or give examples based on what was already presented. But please do not repeat what was already presented. Okay, let's start sharing. The work is for you to share. Okay, the, the, the bet, the, if you share first, so, hindi na, kasi mamaya magdo-duplicate na kayo eh. You better volunteer first. You cannot, you cannot share the same idea. You can expand. You can add. You can give example, elaborate, but please do not repeat what was already given. So, I would like to start. Oh, Lolit, are you being volunteered? Oh. Le can you now listen, please, so that you know which is being duplicated or not? If you duplicate, you don't have lunch. Oh, sige. Oh. You next, huh? Uh, this is what our the yellow team came up with. So this is a collaborative effort of the yellow team. And we, um, we say that collaboration is a teaching-learning approach where the, where the students work together to achieve a goal which and the, the process entails distribution of individual tasks, application of concepts and skills that they had, they had learned beforehand, and uh, that each member is accountable for what they each has done, and the task needs to be well-defined, well-explained, and ideally, it needs to have a rubric so that the students will know how they will be assessed. I hope I missed. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. So there is the idea of the yellow group. Are you ready, Lolit? Most of the keywords here are <laughs> of the same words given by the... The yellow team. Uh, but anyway, uh, we have uh, defined collaboration as a process requiring group working together 
where an individual member shares expertise, insights, which one holds accountability for what have been shared to the group to be able to accomplish the given task. Thank you. From the hello, hello, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's actually, uh, yeah, most of the things they said. <laughs> but anyway, um, in our group, we talked about um, collaborative, uh, a collaborative effort inside the classroom in a different manner. More than just a teamwork, uh, for us, it's an expansion of knowledge. What? For example, one student uh, knows one thing about the lesson, understands the lesson, and then the other understands it in a different way. If they are uh, merged together into a group or they are joined together, they get an understanding different from their own point of view. That way, their, uh, their minds are become wider in a, in a sense. Now, what, what takes away that collaborative effort is the idea of competition against its students. So, for example, in a normal classroom, if one student is vying for an honor student, he would not collaborative, uh, collaborate freely to other students. But if uh, you remove that, uh, that sense of competition, they get to collaborate with each other and they help each other uplift and they learn much more and to a greater sense. Yeah. Ma'am, pwede copy-paste. <laughs> Uh, for our group, uh, what we were discussing was basically the same as everybody. Like it was teamwork, it was sharing, it was group projects. Another aspect that uh, we came out with was instead of limiting it only between students, there's also collaboration between teacher and student. Like the example given by mom was that for a test, uh, the teacher would ask the students for questions to contribute to the test. So like the questions from the students would comprise 30% of the test and the teacher would have 70%. So the student, the teacher will be able to identify what the student deemed as important or took away as very important for that lesson. And at the same time, when they see the question is in the exam, there's a sense of pride and ownership so it's collaboration like everybody said, but not limiting it to between students, but also student and teacher. Uh, I think uh, collaboration also brings uh, this uh, sense of negotiation. Hmm? Uh, because, you know, teachers and students among themselves could also negotiate. One instance is uh, in the uh, development of the rubrics. Hmm? Uh, somehow, when we say collaboration, we are giving our students that you know freedom to voice out, you know, uh, what they feel and how they would want to be uh, to be assessed. So that's also justice. <laughs> There's social justice in the classroom when we collaborate. Um, I'm happy that you see the importance of students getting involved not only in the learning process, but even in the assessment part. Uh, you mentioned about a collaborative work in terms of producing the rubric as a group, which I think is a very good practice because when they have the rubric and they know exactly what's expected from them, you know students are just too happy to make you happy. But sometimes the reason they cannot come out with the requirement is that we're not clear. We, they, we are not clear on what we expect from them. They do not know what you expect from them. For example, you ask them to write an essay, what will they write? Do you give them some kind of structure? How will you be grading them? Do you, do you, do you, is is, uh, is um, quotation from this and that uh, required? Do they need to use, um, for example, bibliographic uh, data? So. If we expect something, we must be very clear. And this is the beauty of the negotiation that was mentioned, where the students learn, learn with the group in deciding how they will be rated. Um, for those of you who have not tried it, I don't know how, how comfortable you are, 
One thing that I find very useful in some of my classes is that I give them the rubric. These are the criteria that we will use for the class. And then we negotiate. No? They ask me why I'm requiring this, and then I justify what. When, when, they, when I see that acceptable, they have an acceptable reason, I withdraw, and then I ask them what's the alternative. So, when they start going through the assessment, they are very clear on the purpose. They are sure of the instruction. They are clear. And therefore, they do not look at assessment as something fearful. But they look at assessment as something that is nurturing, actually, that will help them grow as a person and as a student. Because remember, we as teachers should belong to the same team. The, the teacher and the student belong to a, a team. They are not one against the other. So that in the olden times, you know that teachers will trick students. They give them questions that they were not taught. I, I even remember, <laughs> I remember I was in a, a group of uh, doctors in UP Manila when I'm giving similar thing to them. And then there was the most senior in the group who said, Eh, Celia, bakit ko... Oh, sorry. Why will I give them a test on something that I already taught? Why will I give them a test that, that they already know? So I have to give them something that they don't know. So I said, Sir, what is your objective for that kind of test? Is your objective to confuse your student? Well, I hope we don't have those kind of, or, or we don't, we, we have, we may have those kind of teachers still, but I hope they are slowly dying na. <laughs> Pawala na. Lisa and I uh, teach MST 123, the so teaching of science and uh, mathematics and science for the BSMST students. And what we do, uh, we give a test, a test blueprint or what we normally call a table of specifications. And actually, the students, af after the first uh, exam, they actually ask us to make sure that we give them the test blueprint for the next exam beforehand. Mm -hmm. So we, we have already, uh, well, one format is we give the objectives, and then how many items do we have for each? Well, normally, one item for that objective, and then we classify, mm -hmm. is it? you know, knowledge level, understanding level, uh, application mm -hmm. level. And so they will know how many items there are. And so uh, we have a, we, ha we make sure that our exam uh, covers only those that we, we uh, taught in terms of uh, objectives. And we also give them uh, an idea of the type of exam. Is it multiple choice? Is, do we have essay? That, that kind of thing. Yeah. How long? And what is the feedback you're getting from your student? The, the students actually want, want to have They're it. happy. Yeah, they're happy, they're happy with it. Are they performing? Uh, well. Are they better? <laughs> uh, we didn't do an experiment. Yeah. We, we didn't do an experiment. Like, if we yep. don't have a test blueprint, we have yep, a test yep, blueprint. Yep. But from our experience, what, um, there was a time, I think, that we forgot to give one. And then we said that the next time we will have one. I think they appreciated it yes. when they had the yes. blueprint. But it's, a, it's an idea for possible research, actual research. Is it? And uh, I think they appreciate no, uh, us giving them this table of specifications. And uh, they know where they would uh, study more, in what uh, you know, area. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think... Uh, it will be very helpful, no? Yes. Uh, we do not have to surprise our student. It's the principle that we we, we yes. want to believe in. Yes. We don't surprise, and uh, we we are we believe that in any test, both the students and the teacher should enjoy the test. Okay. So, how many of you are already practicing similar, where you provide the blueprint? Well, I guess theirs is more sophisticated because they have the objective, they have the points. How many points will be assigned for this particular? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Actually, it's a good practice, my friends. It's a good practice because with that point system I, I, uh, uh, assigned for particular objective or item, it gives them the idea on what is important. So if you are the student doing the review, you know where you will focus your attention. So if this question will give me only 20 points and this question will give me 40 points, definitely I will study. I'll put more time on that particular objective that where I will earn 40 points. And you as teachers, I think it's a very important practice that you have to really uh, take conscious effort make a decision on what you consider is important in your course, which means all the students should pass or should learn or master that particular concept or objective before they get out of your class. And this is where you put the highest value. Actually, as I mentioned earlier, this is where a student will, this is where you catch the attention of students. You want to catch their attention, then connect whatever are those valuable knowledge and skills that they should learn in your class to assessment. Because that's where they see what's more important in the class. Rose? Bakit may preliminary pa si Father? Sige, sige. You have to introduce the, the next question. Oh, sige. Yeah, I think uh, she made mention also the negotiation that happens with the students while they're trying to reach the goal. And I think that that belongs to the area of co uh, cooperative. You cooperate with the, with the group you know, in trying to reach a consensus on how you're able to achieve the, the goal. So there is collaboration, there is cooperation. So we extend further the collaboration into a cooperative learning. Uh, there are literature that distinguishes the two, two movements, the collaboration and the cooperation. So when you begin to, to uh, get the consensus on the understanding of that, you cooperate. Because you have to give up something of your own understanding in order to accommodate the understanding and find a consensus. Because that's very important, the negotiation of understanding. Okay, so thank you very much. <clears throat> the point I think Father is trying to raise is that in collaboration, everybody's participation is important. You cannot just be um, a watcher or a witness to what's happening, but you really have to contribute because the, the outcome cannot be achieved without your contribution. You alone cannot achieve that particular outcome without your contribution. So you really have to participate because that will depend on the kind of product that you will produce. Well, given the, your discussion, given your discussion, can you go back to so far what we have done? Do you see collaboration happening here? Yes. Can you start identifying what were the previous activities that we have done, which led you now to starting talking with one another? Are you better? Are you more comfortable with each other than when you started sitting, coming in? Okay. So there's a reason why we are in this kind of setup. We, I cannot just ask you to talk and discuss about collaboration when we ourselves in this environment are not collaborating. So I put you purposely in this kind of setting so that you experience what it is to collaborate. Meaning, if Sean has some idea and he withheld that idea, then the, the output that the group should be able to achieve cannot be achieved because there's something lacking. One did not participate. He cannot achieve it on his own, neither can Romel achieve it on his own. It is through that collaborative work where you can achieve it together. And given all the discussion that you had, I'm just curious. Can you come up with something that will represent collaboration? An image. No, 
No, you don't have to draw it. You can just describe it. Okay, Romel, share. Uh, the first thing that got into my mind is uh, the fishnet. Because every strand of the thing used to make a fishnet must work together in order to catch a fish. Uh, if one strand will not be combined with the other, uh, it would be very impossible for anybody to catch a fish. I think it would be best represented by fish nets. <laughs> okay. How about the Ludim, what's the image? Uh, like what Doc said, so we see now po like a choral group. So there's harmony of their voices and uh, different tones. Yes, yes. The choral. Uh, po. Yes, po. Uh, as a choral group. Po. Choral. Choral, yes. Singing, yes. Choir, the choir. Po. So th there is harmony of their voices. Po. Yes, with a good song. Uh, based on our collaborative thinking, we came up with Wallis Ting Ting. So it's obvious uh, Wallis Ting Ting cannot work with a single piece. It has to be a group. Uh, for the red uh, team, red group, uh, I don't know if it's a thing really, but basketball team, basketball team, mm -hmm. uh, they have one objective that is to win mm -hmm. and they need to contribute all of okay. them. It's one of them as a particular mm -hmm. role. Yes. If I choose not to play, we cannot <laughs> achieve, right? Okay. But in reality, not all people this is this is the this is the challenge I want to pose here. In a in a classroom or even in an online discussion, you will notice that there are students who are very confident, they know the topic very well, and you see them almost always talking. Okay? Whether this is face to face or online, they talk. Now how, what, what's the image that comes to mind? If you, have, if, if you have students like that, and which is happening, I would like to add to you so that there is also, the, all, all the examples given are really very good examples of cooperation or uh, collaboration. But here is one where there is a possibility that there are some who will not. Imagine... Can I have some poor guys here? Poor guys, come forward. John, Romel, uh, Sean, and uh, Rudy, come. What if I give them a log? Troso. You know a log? And I ask them to hold on to it, carry it, right? That is what? Collaboration. What ako naman? Nakasabit lang ako. I'm hanging. Pabigat. <laughs> Pampabigat. Okay. I'm hanging. I'm not... Malit ako eh. Tingnan mo taas. I'm hanging and I'm dependent on all these four guys. Am I collaborating? Hmm. The yeah. <laughs> The hits rider. So think of that because you will have students of that kind. Now, what will you do with those kind of students? Okay? What will you do in order to encourage them? Remember, you will have this kind of students who will just be witnessing, particularly in an online setting, because you don't see them. Okay? Thank you much, guys. Now, as I was moving around, they were talking about, Mei Ling was talking about, oh, the product. Are we sure what we are doing? Are we, all, are we all going towards the same direction? Very good. When you collaborate, you really have to be all clear on where you're going. But is that the only reason why we collaborate? Is there something more than producing something? 
Is there something more that is needed or that we should develop in the classroom beyond the product? Okay, I'm hearing the word of sense of belongingness. Why? Why is that important? Um, through collaboration, um, everyone is given a chance to take part, and that would uh, result to that having something contributed to the accomplishment of a task. So will that kind of feeling encourage them to participate? Okay, so they have that feeling that I belong. What else? Yes? Yes? Can you elaborate a bit, Father? Yes? Okay. Yes? Okay. 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 But did this just happen? Did they just arrive with that feeling na kailangan I have this kind of feeling? Or is it something we teachers, if we are really aiming towards the product, should we also consider the process? So when we look at collaboration, while it's so easy in the classroom setting, we assign students, okay, group work, this is, the, this is the paper, this is the presentation you'll do. But we forget. Many times, students do not know how to do it. And, and the reason here is that we teachers do not, do not know also how to do collaborative work. What skills are needed, what kind of behavior are needed to help your student to become active participant to be more confident, to be more uh, willing to, to share, their con give their contribution. So even those we need to plan. You, if you want a, a, a collaborative work to succeed, you cannot just test them with the product because that will be unfair. Parang, okay, there is the product you have to develop, but how will they develop it? What is that kind of environment that you should set up in order for them to really collaborate. Otherwise, you will have, what did you call me, Father? It's Riker. It's Rider. A Larker. A witness. Just see things, but I'm not participating. What's that? Who see? Ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you for that, my friend. <coughs> now, what is being encouraged now, especially when you do online collaborative assessment, is not to look on the product alone. But you assess also the process. You assess the product, you assess the process. Well, the reason it's so important here is that in, a, in an online setting, since you don't see them, no, uh, you cannot really tell which who contributed the most. Now, it's even difficult in a face-to-face -face setting. While you can see their faces, but did Lolit contributed as much as Divina? If I will be giving them a grade, how will I rate their participation? Very difficult. Now, that's the advantage of online. Because they are transcripted. There is a record. There is a document. So, if you are looking into quantitative participation, you can go over the script and you will see how many times uh, John participated. Or how many times Abby participated. Okay? So, you have numbers to work on. But in addition to that, you may look into how did she contribute to the work. What new ideas were in now you go deeper now. Okay. Um, collaboration, really, to encourage our students is really to look into the whole process, 
the process of collaboration, which you should integrate into your, into your instruction. Uh, a little bit more. When you look at collaboration, as I mentioned earlier, we have very limited training uh, on how to successfully interact and work with other people. But if you notice, in the workplace, those are valued traits when you can work with others. However, in the real world or in the real classroom setting, many students are reluctant to join in a collaborative work. True or false? Why? Because of the competition. I want to go up alone. I know I, know I can be number one. So I don't care where you are. The question I raise, is this, is this what we want from our students? They will always be number one. Re this regarding others. Parabang tapakan ko na sila, basta I go number one. That's not something we in the school should be encouraging. And therefore, even in the school, even you are not a teacher of values education, attending to the last, the least, and the loss is equally our responsibility. Which means collaboration is a valued trait. So we might as well develop it also in the classroom. We cannot just assume that it will happen. We cannot just assume that eventually they will collaborate. No. We have to make a conscious effort to integrate them into the lesson. And therefore, the process is very important in order to encourage uh, group participation, in order to help them do some critical thinking, self-reflection, and even share it. You know, sharing your own reflection is not easy. There are some people who want to be very private. And when you do online, it will be there. Everybody can read. So, what, what will be your policy? Will it be optional? Or will it be required? If it is required, what will you demand from your student? Now, let us look at the other type, collaboration. You want evidence, right? You want proof that they learn. So, there is the product. But, Do you just end with the product? Now, when you do product assessment, usually we do group. We give a group grade. Now, this is one reason why there are reluctant students. I did all the job. Why are we getting the same grade? Right? So there is that unfair workload, unfair grade, and there are group mates who do not want to work. They are difficult to work with. So again, this stresses the importance that you do not grade the product alone, but grade also the process. Here's what other research are saying. Online discussion forum to be effective in facilitating collaborative learning must be assessed properly. I go back to what I said earlier. What is valuable in the course, assess that. But you cannot assess if you did not give time to your student to learn. So you have to teach them first and then assess them. Which means then it is important, the purpose, the criteria, and then the intended outcome are established. Very clear. So when you look, go back home and start looking at your course, you look at this. No? Why are you assessing? Sa upkat, why are we giving essay test soon? <laughs> the criteria for assessment and then the outcome. Um, more what research is saying, when you design online collaborative assessment, 
it's important that students who will be participating in this collaborative effort is that they know the jargon of the field. Because when you start using terms that do not make sense or meaning to others, then how will you give them that confidence to participate? The level of motivation and socialization is equally important. How motivated are they? How, com how comfortable are they to work with others? How do, do they feel they are welcome? Do they feel they belong? Well, they get that feeling even online, not only face-to-face, -face, but more so online. And these are important skills to develop, teamwork, negotiation skills, which were already mentioned. And lastly, because we are working in a different milieu, in a different environment, since we are working online, we need to make sure that they can write, they can read, and they can respond. So this is what I mean, mediated learning. They are put in an environment that is so artificial. The natural way of communicating is what I'm doing now. I speak, you listen. You speak, I listen. But when you put them in a different environment, which is so unnatural, then we have to make sure that they can, they have the skill to do it. Otherwise, well, that's one reason why they will not participate. They cannot read, they cannot write. That's why they don't want to respond because they don't understand what's being given. So all these are consideration when you start designing collaborative assessment. More on what research is saying. Again, it is the engine that drives students. It is what will encourage them to participate in an assessment or not. There was a study done in the UK Open University where they look into in two courses and then they look into the participation of students. When they were optional, very few participated. When they attached it to assessment, then they started participating. And in addition, small group, like what we did now. I cannot interact with you collaboratively online with this number. Right now, we are about 25. No? Even 25 is difficult online, meaning I have to respond to you 25, no? different individuals, different concerns, different needs. But if you can group them, like what I did now, then the students who, who tend to be shy, now they start speaking. There are no other speakers. There are only four of us. If I don't speak, I will be noticed. And when they do peer grading, assessment of the group, the product is not only the product that you are assessing, but you assess also the group. So student one can assess the participation of everybody. Student two, also the same. Uh, one thing I find very useful, group assessment, group grade, which others do not like because they feel that it's unfair. We assign them, for example, for this group work or this uh, small group discussion, the, the total points you should earn is 30 points. So it's one of these members of the group we list all the members and then give the equivalent point. Usually, you will notice a student, they will give everybody 30, 30, 30, 30 friends. Now, don't allow that to happen. What we did was that the total is 30. It's not everybody getting 30, but the total is 30, including yourself. And then the third column you give a reason as to why you give this much point to this particular person. Okay? So, three columns. Name of students, including yourself. Second column, the number of points you will assign for each student, the total of which is 30. And then the third column, the justification. 
You know when you put these papers together, which the students submit, no? you will notice that there are students, because they know that they did not participate, they may give themselves a higher rating, but look at the others, the others, then you will see they have the lowest rating. Then you can now make a decision as to whether should you give that student that high, high rating as she perceived, or should you consider the rating of the other groups? And it worked. Okay. These are some possible learning activities for online courses. While we are looking at the more, more we are in the asynchronous, these are the more collaborative project. This is where self-assessment will come in. And you notice all of, all of this uh, in blue no? are the asynchronous. And some of these projects here will fall under group, they can be group projects like uh, visual collage, uh, collaborative authoring. If you try this, collaborative authoring using wikis or the blog, that's something they can do. And it's something documented again, and it will be very easy for you to, to rate them quantitatively based on certain parameters or maybe the rubric will come in. Well, the question you might be raising, why am I focusing so much on activities? When this is supposed to be a topic on assessment. The reason here is that Coming from my own field, I cannot design assessment without clear understanding on the goals and objectives as well as the activities. The learning activity should more or less simulate assessment. When you change the condition, for example, if I will ask my student to do some uh, visual collage as part of the learning activity, what kind of assessment will I require? Will I give them an essay test? Definitely, I will be asking them to do a visual collage. So you can see that the activities and assessment are closely similar. Well, you who are in education, you know that when you talk of objective, there is a condition. The condition means that this is, given this condition, this is how the student will participate or will behave. Now, change the condition, then they will not be, be behaving in the same manner. For example, if during the learning process, during instruction, I allowed you to use calculator, Oh, people in math, and there are a number. I allowed you to use calculator. So you learn certain formula processes using calculator. Exam time, no calculator. Will they behave in the same manner? Will you get the same? Is that fair? Will you allow that? It cannot be. Because they will be behaving differently if you change the condition. So, this gives you an idea that when you demand, when you teach them something, the assessment is not different from that. So, when you require them to do collaborative authoring, more or less the assessment is something similar. Why will you ask them something different when the output you are looking for is that collaborative authoring? Or, if you want them to work on a collaborative paper. So, how will you assess those? It's also a collaborative paper. Again, maybe using some, some rubrics. Now, it's time to go back. Go back to your, to your meta cards. What we do now, look at your meta card. And identify those, those types of assessment you listed that will fall under collaborative assessment. Which of those do you think will fall under collaborative assessment? Uh, 
Okay, ready na. The green team will start, followed by uh, red and blue and then yellow. They will now stand and to show you what they... Just stand up, show your paper. Oh. In collaboration. Okay, look at their work and see if they are similar to what you have. Look at their answers. Are there questions? If you doubt as to whether that particular activity will lead to collaboration, this is the time to ask questions. Taas, taas. Oh. Any any question? No question? Okay, thank you. Let's move on to the next group. Next group. Look at their work. Look at their work and make sure you understand. What is that one? Graph? Grasp. Ah, what's the meaning? products and standards. Um, yung grass po, in our high, in the high school, okay, the project making, we follow the grass format. So we explain to our students that, okay, you have a goal to do, role, audience, your classmates, say for example, situation, then product, and the standards are the rubrics. Parang kompletong detalye na po yun. But actually, it's a project. Right, but you are explaining there what is required to arrive at that project. Good, Mox. Next, next, that group here. Ah, oh, look at their work. Music video. Oh, sige. Everything. Okay. There's a question. Apro, apro. Can you? Ah. Ah. Okay. Okay. Judith, can you tell them that return demonstration? How you do it online? Ah. Uh, Parang we're talking about for the to be uploaded po, like the music video example po in YouTube. Okay. So if that will be online po. Oh, so, so if, if if I demonstrated how to do ballet, you have to do it also, and then you upload that, and I will. Oh, sige. <laughs> certain skill po. Certain but skill. is that collaborative? For instance. Yes po. Certain can skills you elaborate? will require po collaboration. Oh, can you but, explain that a bit? how the return demonstration will fall under collaborative. Mm. Uh, there are some skills we're in, Paul. We can do it, example, in the form of dance. We, we, we use the different uh, techniques. Like, for instance, there is uh, a project where in they, uh, the students instructed to do or to apply what they have learned about the different exercise movements and then in the form of a dance, modern dance. So they will be incorporating the different types of exercises in the form of dance. That's, yeah, but when you upload the output, is it is it just you? No, po. Ah, it's one of you. So you have to meet together to come out with that video. Uh, in some cases, po. Ah, uh, but remember, we are online. Mm -hmm. Your classmates must be one is in Sulu, the other is in Negros, the other mm -hmm. is in Ilocos, the other one is in Thailand. Okay, think about it. It's a challenge, actually. I want to think about it. It's a challenge for me. How do I do return demonstration online for collaborative work? No, but right now I cannot put it together yet. Mm. That, or that's or one or one student po may be uh, assigned for that specific uh, demonstration, and then another student for another part mm -hmm. or portion of that. Okay. Like well, that. do you agree with that? Also enhancement. For example, uh, one student already uploaded something on YouTube, and then one another student has an ens enhancement for what they uploaded. They mm -hmm. can share through video. Okay. So w uh, where is the collaboration? Remember, for example, um, my my uh, my project is Flash, Flash. So somebody will be doing the drawing, another one will be doing the animation, another mm -hmm. will be training, and the other one will be shaping. Mm -hmm. So that will be correct. That is to come up with one animation. Well, I can only. understand that, but it's the dance which I cannot connect. <laughs> 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 okay. I can 
Ah, uh, what what? The what what Aphrodite showed me earlier. Pakikin show me Aphrodite. Okay, music video. Okay, that you can work collaboratively, but it's the dance that I'm having problem with. But anyway, sige. May we hear the which group now? Which group now? Yellow. Oh, everybody look at their work. Do you agree? Do you have question? Oh, sige. Anong report? You want to explain? So, so the, the report is the report is a prod, uh, is a result and then behind the 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 result is a process. So the process is uh yun yung i-collaborate ng mga involved. Ah, oh, sige. The output is a process. It's a read. Ah, oh, sorry. The output is a written report. Yeah. But we how do we arrive at that report? That is where the collaboration process comes in. Sige. Okay na? Ah, uh, yes. With regards po, with regards po recitation, is it considered po as a collaborative work? that can be done online? Well, I, I'm glad you asked that because I'm a little bit uncomfortable when you do grading based on recitation. Even in a residential, it's very difficult. What do we test? We, you test, sabi nga, there are objectives that you have to achieve and you have to demonstrate your mastery or the ability to perform. So, you said, in some practices, you have one question related to that objective. You can have three questions related to that objective. You can have five questions related to that objective. My problem, when you exam, when you give exam, there should be of similar difficulty. Can you come up with 50 items, questions of similar difficulty, so you can eat each one, your student, a graded recitation? So that's my difficulty. Actually, we have been discouraging recita uh, graded recitation because we are discouraging our students to participate. Listen, guys. We are discouraging students to participate because they know that they will be penalized no? if they give the wrong grade. So it's a, to me, it's a, it's a practice I would rather discourage. If we really in, 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 um, want to student to encourage, remove that penalty. But if you do graded recitation, they cannot tell anyway. Any, they cannot tell anymore what is graded recitation and what is regular recitation. Okay, so think about it. Yes, Father. Recitation is part of the formative evaluation. Okay. It's sort of a dipstick that you measure with the Yes. So it's in the response that you respond to the situation of a student. Mm -hmm. So it's a dipstick. Okay. Uh, it's not something to be graded. Okay. Think, but, you know? okay, if, if that is the case, I agree. I accept that. If it is a non-graded thing, sure. But if it, is a, if it is graded, meaning whatever their answer will be recorded towards a grade, questionable. It is formative. It's your way of feeling. Can they understand? Can they do it? It's your way of finding evidence that there is learning or if there is confusion. So if there is confusion based on their answers, then you might need to do something like reteaching the whole course again or the whole lesson. Okay? So it's your measure, it's your yardstick or a dipstick as used by the father as to, to determine whether you are really going to the, towards your objective. Basta formative, agree ako. Yeah. It's a prerequisite to your lesson. Okay? So you ask them to read something, so prepare, preparatory to them to, or to you, the class going towards that intended lesson, then there are prerequisite, meaning you read before you come to class. Okay? Yes, Nema. When we were doing our master's program at the Department of Reading and we make lessons, 
this is in reading and uh, there's always a part especially if you assign the reading that's called the check up quiz okay so before you, you the, the students are given the you know motivation etc unlocking of difficulties and then they are supposed to read and the first thing that is done when they come back the next day is to take a 10 item check up test but we are always, they always emphasize that this is not a big deal of, of, of assessment. It's, it's the purpose of the check-up quiz is to develop in them the habit of reading the assignment. So uh, that is what I think is what she is uh, arriving but at. But no, it, it, it can contribute to the grade because th there will not be any motivation for them to, you know, to achieve in the check-up test. But it's very, very minimal. Okay. And then it supposed to be when they have developed the habit you win them from that you know it's it's like if you cannot persuade them then you, you apply an element of force <laughs> so the, the element of persuasion the, the element of force but it's emphasized that it's only 10 items and that you only ask you know uh, first level questions that are that have one correct answer you know? so it's it's actually very fast you know, so you, ha you have it in the first five minutes. And so when, when students are habituated, ah, meron kaming check-up test, kailangan basahin ko to even if it's five minutes before the time. And I think that happened when I was in high school. That we, we, we always have to read because we know that there is a check-up quiz. But it's very minimal in terms of the, its contribution to the overall grade. It's, okay. It's not the major objective. Okay, it's thank you, Nema, for that contribution. So there's uh, another point of view. It's up for you to make a decision. Okay. Uh, let's move on. There are, uh, I would like to give you some examples of uh, assessment. Uh, taken from this work of, uh, this is the Open University uh, article I, I am sharing you, online, co online uh, collaborative assignment. Here, you're not looking at the group alone, but there is the individual contribution. Okay. The individual contributing and they have uh, equivalent point as well as for the collaborative work. Now, I guess at this point, I really emphasize so much the connection of these three elements. It's so important that those are very clear. Those are very clear as to why the purpose, and this is the re and this is the activity or the the tool you will use in order to gather the evidence that that objective was truly achieved. After that, now you can plan your activities. So you can see that there is a relationship between these three elements. Those in curriculum, these are the three elements. Ang pangapat lang na wala dyan is the content. This is a revolutionary uh, process. Because in practice, what we do is we have the objective, then the activity. Now, if you really want to have a tight, the tightness, be very, very sure that there is that match, the perfect match, between your objective and your assessment, then design your assessment based on the objective, which you can do, you know. For example, in college, we have our syllabus, right? College. You have your syllabus, and I hope in your syllabus, you also have listed all your objectives. This I'm just answering. I'm just answering. Hindi pa yun. Oh, so, if you have those kind of uh, objectives listed in your syllabus, you can already plan all your assessment activities for the rest of the semester. It is not something that, okay, I will teach for one, one, um, one week or two weeks, then I plan my assessment. No. Okay? In this kind of practice, you will be very conscious now that there is something you need to achieve. Because it's very clear in your mind that after two weeks, when I assess my student, then they should be able to do this. So that will also influence the activities that you will plan for your student. Remember, one important responsibility we have as teachers is not the content. Don't reinvent. The content is there. It's more the activities that you plan for them. Because it is in these activities where the students learn. If you just... Repeat once in the book, okay? which some new teachers do because they don't know what to do. 
you know, these students will have difficulty really learning it because you are merely repeating what's in the book. Maybe they can even read better if you don't just do it. So, to me, given all the experiences I have with instruction, pedagogy, etc., our most important role is to plan the activities because it is in the activities where students learn. And equally with the activities are the assessment. Because as I pointed out, there should be no difference between the activities and the assessment. If, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if the outcome is for a report, no? the end product is a report, then what are the activities that you will require in the student so that they can produce the report? Or in Diva, you have to teach them how, what is report, how do you do a report, what are the criteria you will use to produce the report. Yes. After activity, after you know, the the loop, the loop you show that eh? activity and then come to the objective again. Mm -hmm. So that means when the student do some activity and then you adjust the object or something. Eh? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. The reason why it's going back, this will give me actually uh, an idea on what to improve. It's a continuous process in order to continuously improve instruction. Uh, actually, sometimes, oh, this is he's already talking about adjustment of objectives. Do you adjust the objectives? Yes, depending on the level of your students. If your students are all beginners and your objective is already at the mid-level, you have to put that down. You have to... You have to uh, lower your expectation because your students are there. You cannot ask them to do division if they cannot add, if they cannot subtract or multiply. So those are prerequisite to, for them to do that. Now, in the process of my teaching, my activities, I realize you cannot multiply. Then how can I proceed to division? So I have to go back. Prepare activities that will prepare you for division. I adjust the activities. Now, the reason I said I adjust the objective based on the level of my student. Because if I am already starting in the level of them making a, an analysis, and yet they do not understand, they, do not, uh, they have no understanding, they, have, they cannot apply what they learn, how will I require them to do analysis? How will I require them to, to produce a product when they do not understand the, the, the basic information needed to ap uh, apply to that product? Well, so there is that kind of tweaking. It's not just the activity, but it's also the, the objective. However, no? when, if, if this is the standard set, meaning at the end of the school year, this is what you should have achieved. You, you, you start lower than usual, but at the end, you should also reach that point where your students should be able to achieve at the end of semester. In short, literally, um, literally, it's you, teacher, going down, going down, and pull the student up to that level where they should achieve for that particular course. If your level is, they should be here, Okay? And your beginning is here, but your students are down there. How can you begin at the middle when they don't have the prerequisite to start at the middle? So what do you do? You go down. You, you make your objective more basic so that you can reach their level of competency and pull them up to that level. So that's the challenge for us teachers. Okay? Well, just to give you an idea a little bit more. Um, an example of a finished product. No? If your objective is this, your assessment is that, activity, the small group, working towards that product. Another one is more of the process. Your objective is to create a feeling of community. Your assessment is a rubric that I can use for the whole group. And then I can proceed to self-reflection to find out what exactly did I contribute to the achievement of this? Or how do I feel 
after one week or two weeks of this kind of activity. And the activities you may introduce are a discussion forum or small group work. As mentioned earlier, in a big group, it is difficult for everyone to participate. So you encourage participation by putting them in a smaller group. Whether this is online no, or offline, you can use the same strategy or methodology. Well, given that we are already talking about self-reflection, the topic I want to present now has something to do with who are you in this whole process. You know, who are you in this whole process? What is your contribution to that course? Well, well a little, I will not deal on that, but in another training that we do, one participant that struck me most when he said, sometimes I don't want to look at the mirror because I'm afraid what I see there, I'm not willing to change. Because it is true self-reflection, then you get an idea of who truly you are. And you know it's very difficult sometimes when you realize who you are and you are not willing to change. So, this is what self-assessment is all about. It's you looking into the mirror and see whether the feedback you see on that mirror, it's really telling yourself about yourself. You know, at the early stage, if you observe children, you ask a student to rate themselves. What, do they rate themselves high or rate themselves low? Do you have an idea? Children, those who are in the basic ed, if you ask them to rate themselves, will they rate themselves high or will they rate themselves low? Oh, anybody? You know, what research is saying, high achiever tends to overrate themselves. Low achiever tends to underrate themselves. That's for kids. Okay? So meaning, if I, f I am good, then I rate myself higher. Even higher than my real worth. However, as you grow older, if you have done self-assessment, how many of those of you who did self-assessment? What we observe is that they tend to rate themselves lower than their real worth. You know why? Because maybe at a certain stage, they can now distinguish assessing oneself for oneself and assessing oneself for others. So there is a change. Now you will realize now, I, I'm not really that good yet. I'm not really that perfect yet. So be, because of that, the, the more the adult, adult student, those in college, graduate school, they tend to rate themselves lower. And which I've, I've observed myself. Uh, father was my student. And one of the requirements I asked them is to give themselves a grade. And the feedback I got is that that is one of the most difficult requirements I demand. Because they have to justify the grade. And you know when, when I plot together the grade that they gave themselves and the grade that was arrived given all those requirements, do you think their grade is higher or lower than what the data uh, showed? Higher? Lower? Lower. So this proves that as you grow older, you're stricter with yourself. Because you, can, you have a, maybe a better, no, uh, you, can real, you can see how others are performing, so you tend to compare yourself with them. Now, these are some examples of uh, methods for recording feedback. 
for self-assessment. They're not really the self-assessment themselves, but they are the, the different methods that you can do in order to record what is new, what you learn, what are some of your problems, what are some of your hesitation, what are some of your discomfort. You know, we cannot read students' mind. We cannot read their feeling also. But, so it is through this reflection paper that we get an idea of who truly they are. Are they enjoying? Are they more confused with the class? This will give you an idea what to do. Uh, this is a sample which I've used in my class. I think, Father, you are in this class. Uh, but this is already an addition after you left. Um, many times students are having difficulty starting their own reflection. They don't know what to do. Their first reflection usually is a summary of what happened in the class which I'm not asking. Okay? So I have to point out to you, to them, that it is not really summarizing what happened, because I know what happened, I was there, but it's really your own feeling. This is the affective aspect. So I give them a guide where they can now write based on any one of these. Oh, so may I move on? Uh, given this, there are a, no a number of self-assessment which I've used. You know, I started going into uh, alternative assessment in 1999. After a training I had, I went back here and started applying alternative assessment. Actually, my pace first paper presentation about alternative assessment is in the same hall. So this is now a uh, full circle, coming back, and I'm retired, and I'm still talking about self-assessment. Anyway, when I started doing this, uh, I experimented different ways of doing it. No? So here I will show you a sample using uh, self-assessment rubric, where my students were asked to design a poster. Maybe you'll ask, graduate school? Doing a poster? Yes, why not? Because you cannot come up with a poster if you don't know anything about the topic you're supposed to prepare for a poster. So, this is an example of the first poster. I call it the original poster. The student just came out with this. This is a course on distance education, but it is offered face-to-face uh, -face in the College of Education. So this student came out with this. When I asked them to use the rubric to rate themselves based on this rubric, okay, I gave them the opportunity to improve their work, and this is now the revised version. Is there an improvement? Yes. Now, did I, did, I, did I mark the first one? No, I did not mark the first one. Which one did I mark? I marked the second one. So you see, the quality of the work is a lot better the second time around. I did not mark them. I did not penalize them. But they arrived. They have their own self-realization that, my work is too far from what the rubric says. So they made their own decision and then revise it. I mark the revised poster. So you see, it's already an improved version. So you now help, you can, you can come out with, the students will come out with better output, better products, quality, and I don't have to do a lot of marginal notes when I am not happy with their work, because they themselves realize that there are things that they can do differently. Okay, the last activity. I would like you to look at your meta cards. Do you have any meta card or uh, assessment type that will fall under under this? Okay, green. Just just read it. The green. Malakas, malakas. Journal. Journal. The red. Malakas. Wala. 
the 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 blue the blue okay the yellow yes so the portfolio also so these two have portfolio this one have a journal the group there essay essay maybe um, would you like to use more a diary a reflection journal yes yes oh, sige. so given the examples huh? given the examples that you the type of assessment that we have been working with huh? you do you realize are you more of are you more of uh, uh, are you moving towards self-assessment or are you still more of the group work? You're feeling, no? You're feeling about the course. Okay. Now, given all uh, the sample that you have, um, what I'm getting at is that we have not used self-assessment yet. No? Some of you are starting, but maybe after this, whether you are teaching online or offline, it will be uh, a practice that I will encourage. Um, Self-meditation is something like, you know, in real life, you keep running and running and running. There's always erring, deadline. Self-reflection, you're asked to be quiet and do your own introspection. Why did I do better in this course? Why am I not participating in this activity? Why am I unhappy in this class? Why am I excited to be with this teacher? It's really looking into how you learn. Because in the process that you understand now how you learn, then you can enrich those practices that makes you happy, that makes you more comfortable, confident, in the classroom. So this is what self recollection is all about. Is it graded? It is not. It is not graded in the sense that how can you assess feeling? So how do I rate it? How do I encourage my student? Well, following the structure that was discussed, meaning you do not just summarize, but you really express your feeling Number two, there's a deadline. Do you meet the deadline? Those are my basis. But I do not rate what's written there. Everything written there is acceptable. However, when the students submit to me a mere summary, which is not what a reflection, I return it to them. Because it's clear in my syllabus that the projects or requirements that do not meet the standards are returned to the student and are required to do a second round. You know, especially when you start working in an online, online uh, environment, that second chance is very important. When students are given a second chance, they are better motivated to participate in class. Even us, we are adults. One, one exposure, like what you are doing here, one exposure is not enough. They need more time. And so giving them a second chance, they do better. And remember, open university are second chance universities. Meaning all those people who failed in the residential then went into this kind of mode of learning. Then they realized that this is my future. This is where I want to be. <coughs> okay. This I want to share with you. I said I started um, this alternative assessment in 99. And this is one quotation which I want to share with you from a student who went through this course with me. How do you feel when students say, it, it is exhilarating. You feel so good because you know you're able to achieve what you need to achieve for that course. Okay, lastly, 
let's do your own self-reflection. Choose any one of those, and I would like you to write it wherever. And I will be asking all of you to share your answer publicly. So do not share what you are not, what you think is private. You share what you think can be shared publicly. Choose. Um, um, okay. For me, I, I would like to bring negotiation between student and the lecturer back to the university in Thailand. Yeah, because I think that this is a good, good idea for me to, to use that in my university at this time yes. from now. Okay, thank you. Go. Uh, for me, naman po, in our department, maybe the combination of both the importance of uh, the combination of collaborative as well as the self-assessment techniques. Okay, thank you. Go. Me first. Uh, I'm going to bring the idea of having the negotiation between the teachers and the students in constructing the rubric in order for us to meet what is really the output for a particular subject. Okay. You will have a session on rubric this afternoon, no? Okay. Yeah. Um, for so long, I've been thinking how my students will remember me after they graduate. So now, I think I would include more self-reflection assessment and then collaborative activities so that after, when we meet after 10 years, kanyan, they would remember how happy they are inside my classroom. Yes. Do you know that students do not remember your particular lesson, but you, they remember how you treated them, how they felt in the class? <laughs> okay. Uh, the thing that I remember most in this uh, seminar is that recitation is a formative a assessment thus must not be graded. So in a replacement, I would use checkup quiz to measure the same objectives. Yeah, uh, on my part, uh, I, I took very well that the collaboration of students and educators in creating the rubrics before the uh, no, class. And also, I'm planning to also uh, study the giving the students the, t t the TOS before the examination so that I could, I might as well check what the difference would be. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, actually, it's a challenge on how to change the mindset of students, parents, and teachers that assessment and assessment of the learning is not merely memorizing the, even the periods and the commas in something, but it's understanding. It's the understanding, not the memory work. I will apply again um, self-assessment or journal writing because I stop it. Um, it's, te it's quite tedious to read all the insights of the students. Uh, but now I'm planning to apply it again so that I would know their insights and their ideas about the subject and their feelings also. Okay. Uh, just a comment. Yes, it is very tedious to come up with 50 reflection paper. But this is what you can do. You limit the, the, the number of, for example, you can limit only 10 lines in these sentences, no? Because one sentence can be one paragraph. So 10 lines is one. In my case, I always require my student one page, double space, one inch on both, 12 font. Beyond page one, I don't read. So, you know, you have to find out how you will cope with the students. Go. Um, same with mom. Um, I used to do that in our classroom because I am handling values ed. So, reflect to thinking. I used to read. I talagang nag-enjoy pa ako nung dati. Kaso 400 students, ay, <laughs> medyo nakakasawa din. So, I stopped teaching 400 plus students because I'm the only values teacher for the entire year level. Kaya sabi ko, so na, tutunan ko yun nga, is, um, big groups, so break down them to small groups, then um, do, not con, do not focus on the content, rather you focus on the process para may iwasan yung pagiging unfair sa mga sudyante. Kasi usually ganun po si nagre-reklamo pag nagsasubmit. Sure ako lang naman pong gumawa. <laughs> eh di yun nga po. So yung process po ng pag-grade ay eh, mas naunawaan ko po. So that's where... Uh, that's one way of helping yourself uh, uh, manage hundred students. Uh, Mei Ling? I will focus more on assessment for learning. 
was just trying to get to know my students more. And therefore, I will encourage more self-directed activities that will encourage my students to know and reveal themselves. This will, in the long run, be a portal for more spirit of collaboration. Um, for me, what I understand is the word collaboration. By this, you can actually assess of the, what students will learn. And by ano yan, which struck me most yung my objective activities and assessment. So it will give the students a more understanding and the feeling of belongingness. Mine naman is about collaborative assessment in small group discussion during case simulation session. What I need to improve is the ano, yung more details about in the process of assessment. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Now, what I would really love to try in my class is the collab collaborative work since we always do individual work. When you are teaching something that's very difficult, it's so important to have that kind of support that you provide to students. So there is that kind of small group discussion that they can work together. You know, you will free yourself from... Uh, uh, mentoring others or coaching others because they help each other and they they are able to understand better because they they talk of the same language okay once you notice that they can work as a group then you can make pair because that, that's where you will see if really you are successful from a group a pair once you see that they are able to do it that's when you do them individual work. Okay? It's really like a building where you have all the scaffolding, but eventually you have to remove that slowly because you want the student to become independent learners. Okay, move on. Thank you. Uh, just like what mom said, I think it's a good thing to bring back to my school the part where you don't really have to grade a recitation. In addition to that, I think it's a very good idea to present test blueprints before the actual test, just like what, what Mam Rosa have shared to us. Okay, so I would want to uh, have the negotiation between students and teachers, especially in the construction of rubrics and uh, with the activities that I would be having in the classroom because uh, in my case, it would be very difficult for students to love math uh, so I would uh, want to uh, design the activity uh, in a way that they would have the maximum participation. The collaborative work. Uh, yeah. I, I believe in continuous updating, no? and that's why I always make use of opportunity like this. I thought I have learned already much, but I realized that now my stock knowledge has been expanded. I never have heard before the test blueprint. I only heard it here. So I think it's always uh, always a good uh, opportunity to be able to have the thirst for being, up, I'm say, update yourself and uh, continuous learning. Um, I, I like the idea of having the children contribute in the design of the assessment to be used in school. And at the same time, um, incorporate the use of uh, self-reflection self so that teachers would be able to have an in-depth understanding of how they, the children feel about the, the lesson and the process of learning. What level are you teaching? Grade school. Grade school. I, I, I handle grade school, but I also teach college students. Grade school, what age? Principal po ako. Now, but if you're teach, handling students, uh, teachers will be working with the younger kids. It does not mean because they're young, they cannot express themselves. They can. Maybe through drawings. You know, yung mga smiley natin. How do you feel today? Oh, smiley. Actually, it's a very simple way, but it's possible. Maybe I could um, require them to include part of their planning uh, a way for students' reflection. So, thank you. 
Okay. For me, it is the importance of having table of having a table of specifications and the application of collaborative approach and self evaluation. And uh, uh, for me, uh, I would involve my students more on activities that would show uh, collaboration among the group members and appreciate. I appreciate the negotiation between the teachers and the students. So I would involve also my students in making exams so that they, they will enjoy and they would love math even more by in, uh, answering questions, uh, answering exams. Na naging part sila doon. Uh, for me, ma'am, I would try to use reflection because we don't use that much in our uh, course. Uh, pro hopefully, this will help me know my students better and from that, we can work on the learning process. And also for the collaborative work, we'll try to incorporate more collaboration on or uh, small group discussion among our students. What, what I think uh, I would like to be more conscious of is the cycle. To be a little more conscious that after designing my objectives, then move on right away to designing the assessment questions before I think about seriously about planning the activities. Because uh, as you said, you know, actually we've been taught that before, but you know, we, I always tend to go to the activity before finalizing the, the assessment. So it, it's, it was a very good reminder for me to do the assessment early on and then uh, assess the activities to follow. I would uh, also like to say that I really appreciate the, um, the tip on the peer assessment where you have the three columns because mm -hmm. I didn't think about that before, like having the total, I mean, everybody um, contributing to the total instead of giving, uh, you know, for equal for all. And uh, another one, um, it was a good affirmation for me that it's always good to have a second chance. Um, dun, sa, dun sa course that tinuturo namin ni Lisa, we have lesson planning. So it's difficult to have a good lesson plan on the first draft, second draft. So I always, what I did before was always to say, it's okay, you, you can improve it. I'm not going to grade it yet. Then you, you give it to me when you're ready. So I think it was uh, a good affirmation. And then last but not the least, I love the log and hitch rider analogy, which I will demonstrate, <laughs> have the class demonstrate, so that to, to discourage, to discourage the passive ano, hitch riders. Me too? Well, uh, on. is this on? Yes. Okay. Um, I am just um, happy to, uh, to learn that uh, it's kind of validation you know, of what I have been doing. And uh, now I'm happy that I, that I know that I am doing it right. Uh, actually, I'm doing that second chance even in my mathematics class. So if the students are not happy with their scores, okay, let's, everybody will have a second chance. So everybody will be happy. It's not the score, but it's the, you know, the process and the opportunity to learn from the, uh, from the mistakes. Uh, well, I, know I guess the bottom line of everything that we're doing here is learning. Yes. Yeah. You know. So we should not be afraid to give students a second chance. A second chance. You know, in the process, I have my own personal reflection. When I did this work, I am retired for about two years now, and I, I will teach EDDE 204. This is a assessment for distance education. These are the things I will integrate. After working on this paper, uh, I realized that I was working with a big group. That's why I was so tired. You know, I have 28 students from all over the world, and I have to re respond to them one by one. And I was telling my friend, this is a three-unit course, but I'm giving like a full-time work. So now I learned that I should be breaking them. I should be clear of my expectation, especially in the open forum, the online discussion. The, do you, did you realize that when you were, you were giving answers, I said, no repetition? You can expand on the ideas of others? Because in real life, in discussion forum, 
you will find a lot of those students who will just re repeat what was said earlier. But when you put that structure, then they will be more conscious that they should not repeat what others are upset. And of course, give more time for interaction. I'm so strict with one week allowance, and my student wants to give more, but I said one week. Now I realize that, you know, to real learning to happen, I really have to go deeper give, by giving more time. In education, this is what they call wait time. The longer the time, the more, the better are the answers. In the classroom, three, three seconds, uncomfortable na tayo. Okay, lastly, I would like to end this with my email address just in case you want to connect with me. Um, I'm heavily involved now in mentoring the mentors program. Uh, this is rekindling the love for learning, particularly our public school teachers. And that is our motto in that mentoring. We want to improve things. We have to start with ourselves. So thank you very much.